Welcome back to Crystal Clear! I'm Ostrich Vox, and despite pulling the engine on Homeworld Gems, Fusion, and World Building, these last two episodes of Steven Rich's Future sees the turning point in this epilogue's narrative, from a lighter story to a darker story, much like the turning point in the original series. Here, however, this shift isn't brought upon by an intergalactic threat, but instead, a very human fear of the future and people drifting away from one another. With that being said, let's kick off this Steven Rich breakdown, Last ones for a while thanks to the hiatus with Little Graduation, storyboarded by Drew Green and Paul Vileko. Of course, spoiler warning, if you have not seen these episodes, please go watch, then come back. With all that said, let's dive in. This episode immediately sets us up for heartbreak, as Steven cruises into town while jamming to Sadie Killer and the Suspects, their so titled theme nonetheless, which we know Steven holds emotional value towards due to his role in the band's origins. Yet, as we'll discover later in the episode, the band has, well, disbanded. Like, like the Beatles? Steven swings by Lars's shop, Space Trees, to pick up the little homeschool graduation cake, and we finally get a good look inside after being introduced to the concept of the store in Future's first episode. Blue Lace Agate, as the only other employee on the clock, shows that she no longer works on the boardwalk per Amethyst's assignment in the episode guidance. It shows that the little homeschool gems aren't afraid to get out there and try new things in addition to what they're comfortable with. Now the entire menu of pastries is full of space puns. Let's run through them, shall we? Croissant Moon, obviously Croissant and Crescent Moon. Black Donut Holes, obviously Donut Holes with a twist. Galileo Gallet, a nod to Galileo the Astronomer, and a Gallet Cake. And who can forget Galileo from the iconic jam Bohemian Rhapsody. Chocolate Chip Cookie is obviously a pun on Chocolate Chip Cookie. Ortmeal Raisin is obviously Oatmeal Raisin, but Ort comes from Ort Cloud, a theoretical cloud region of the solar system named after the Dutch astronomer Jan Ort. Total Eclipse of the Tart is a play on the song Total Eclipse of the Heart, but we can imagine the pastry has a kick to it. And last but not least is Red Dwarf Velvet Cake. Red Dwarf being a star, and Red Velvet Cake being very delicious in my mouth. Throughout the shop, we can also spot the Warp Pad S Treat, Eclairs, Macaroons, Flan, various cakes, Cake Pops, Ube Rolls, and Pulverone. A Filipino style shortbread made of toasted flour, powdered milk, sugar, and butter. Sadie Rock and her new look arrives at the shop to pick up her own order, which throws Steven on an emotional roller coaster, jumping from nostalgia to devastation. Learning that Lars and Sadie are no longer an item of any kind, only friends? Say uncle was right! Because Sadie has a new romantic partner, Shep, who we'll gush about in a moment. As we get there though, Sadie's comment about how long she's been dating Shep clues us in on Future's constant passage of time once more. At the beginning of the epilogue, Sadie still had her blonde green hair on tour. During the events of the earlier episodes, she would have met Shep and began dating off screen as the relationship blossomed up to the current point in this episode. Future's frequent time jumps helps hammer in one of its messages that comes to light in this episode. You can't stop the future, and everyone's lives go on even when you're not present for it. It's hard to deal with, but that's just how the pastry crumbles, ha cha cha! Steven's dismay isn't put at ease by Lars's words, as the pink Ferrari reveals that he and the off colors are embarking back into space, willingly this time, now that the aforementioned gems are finished up with little homeschool. While I'm amped for the potential within Lars's adventures in space, both for this epilogue and possibly anything lying beyond it, I gotta say I love how this still feels great. Grounded. With the current state of the world of Steven Universe, Lars and company going back into space is akin to a friend moving away to another state or country after getting a taste of studying abroad or just relocating for college. From personal experience, I have friends and family who stayed in their new environment post-graduation rather than coming back home for good. And of course, having a taste for the world of animation, my own journey is going to take me out of my home eventually. But for now, we're having fun with this YouTube gig. It's important to explore yourself and see what else the world has to offer, or in this case, the universe! Another scene for the future is sewn into Lars questioning Steven's next move, asking if he's ready to excel beyond running Little Homeschool and trying something new, an attempt at which we see in the next episode. The first graduating class move their tassels, and before we know it, the off colors are no longer tiny pebbles lost in this confusing world, but big boulders ready to take on anything and everything. Yeah, yeah, go Paparaccia, yeah, yeah, go Fluorite, yeah, yeah, go Rotonite, yeah, yeah. Shout to the Rutiles. This takes us to Steven chatting it up with Sadie and her partner, Shep, 
the first human non-binary character in the series without being a fusion. Previous non-binary characters were Stevani and Smokey Quartz. As they had they them pronouns like Shep, but as they were fusions who relied on the existence of two other components to exist, it was looser representation that evaded the censors. Here, Shep goes all out with the universe flexing that they're no longer afraid to tiptoe around the fact LGBT people exist. They have always existed and will continue to exist. They are valid, they matter, and there's no room for any kind of debate on that. Shep is voiced by India Moore, an actor and model who's also non-binary, most known for the role as Angel and Vigilista on the FX show Pose. Go congratulate them on Twitter. This would also likely land Sadie on the LGBT spectrum. I say likely because I know people who identify as heterosexual and date people who identify as non-binary. A personal example of mine being a close friend and their partner. However, from the moment Sadie laid her eyes on Stevani back in Alone Together, back when her and Lars were younger and they had no way of knowing who Stevani was, I had a hunch she was as straight as Rose's hair. Steven references the events of Island Adventure in his weird attempt to immortalize his OTP, which is even weirder because Island Adventure was about Sadie stranding Lars on an island to get him to open up. It was very unsettling and a big oof for everyone involved. So this is just one of those moments where Steven comes off as kind of insensitive, especially bringing this up right to Sadie's face. As Steven learns the suspects are splitting up, we get insight into the lives of the cool kids. Jenny is starting her own phone accessory line with literal phone jackets. Sour Cream is getting gigs in Empire City as a DJ, a big move up in this world, I'm sure Greg is proud, and Buck got into medical school. Jenny's gag about it taking 20 years from to save lives being not too much of an exaggeration, it's close to the grueling reality of dedicating years of medical study, Sadie and Shep perform a song about moving on and heading into the future, titled Looking Forward, Shep's instrument being an EWI, electronic wind instrument. Through the lyrics, Sadie acknowledges her past performances as terrible, and while I find it a bit harsh, I think it sheds light on what I always expected. Kate Mikochi always got a ton of flack from fans who felt as if Sadie's singing voice wasn't the strongest, but it was intentional, as Sadie was throwing herself into this new medium. Now that she's seasoned with an entire band discography under her belt, she's greatly improved, and it shows in her singing. This song coupled with Lars heading home before his big trip into space triggers Steven's loneliness, his anxiety over no longer being needed, and feeling left behind. This emotional outburst translates into pink Steven mode, with a sudden formation of his diamond shield, which first appeared in Change Your Mind, this time on a much larger scale. This conflict is reminiscent of Bubble Buddies, but instead of Steven being unaware of how to control his powers, this time the focus comes in Steven denying his feelings, projecting onto other people like Lars. We also have a fun jab at the Steven perspective, Sadie and Lars explaining that they just couldn't reconnect after Lars's initial return from space. Steven perplexed as to why he didn't see any of this, but once again, it hammers home that not everything that happens with friends and life are our business. Their lives advance regardless of ours, and not everything needs to involve everyone. Shep sizing up Steven is also a breath of fresh air as it shows how easily identifiable Steven's flaws and issues are to an outsider. Those who are sort of removed from the situation and haven't known Steven since his mourning period over Cookie Cat. There's also a bit of powerful imagery as everyone consoles Steven in his crisis, Shep sandwiched between Lars and Sadie, without any outward conflict needing to happen between the three of them. They're all fine, they're civil, and being cramped up moments away from death but still having a smile on their faces, it shows that all of this was Steven's own issues. Now, how Lars especially handles the situation from beginning to end is a prime example of character development through and through. I am so proud of Lars. I remember when I first began this channel and I made a video about which humans could potentially join the Crystal Gems and how I once said Lars was one magical experience away from everything changing, from his arc really taking place. Being able to look at that three years later, see how he as a character is three years later, my heart is just full. Seriously, Lars has always been one of my favorite characters and it's because I always believed in him to get to this point. As Steven comes to terms with Sadie and Lars moving in different directions, his goodbye to Lars saying the groundwork for a potential upcoming storyline, as he likely will visit Lars in space in an upcoming episode, Steven also begins a new path of his own, parting ways from Little Homeschool, embarking on a night drive that's visually similar to the future title card, and Steven gets a chance to reflect to himself. Parts nowhere but the middle of the woods, probably not too far from Jasper, and we can also spot a box of cheese pizza near the car, which cements Steven's 
vegetarian diet. Yeah, this episode definitely pulls on my heartstrings, but it pulls on them even more if you count the similarities to the Simpsons episode, Mother Simpson, which also concluded with Homer gazing at the stars near his own car. This emotional whiplash is just too much, man, too much. And for the first time so far in Steven Universe Future, we don't end on a remotely happy note. It's just somber, more bitter than sweet. And the feels are only going to get worse from here. But as always, these are just my thoughts and I want to hear yours. What did you think of this episode? What was your biggest takeaway? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RoundTableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at AltricVox. We're also on Instagram. Help Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please sort of like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Vox signing out.